Hi everyone. Today I will be talking about scholarly metrics. There are three learning objectives. After this presentation, you will be able to interpret some standard citation metrics with caution and know where to find them. You will also be able to explore three major sources of citation data, including Web of Science, Scopus, and Google Scholar. Last, you will be able to identify best practices on broadening your scholarly impact. First, let's begin with H-Index. The H-Index was introduced by Hirsch in 2005. It can be defined as number of papers published that have each been cited at least H times. This indicator combines the number of papers and the number of citations in one index. The figure on the right side shows the intersection of the 45 degree line with the curve giving the number of citations versus the number of papers. The H-index can be applied to any level of aggregation, such as author, institution, and journal. Here's an easy way to manually calculate your H-index. Organize papers in descending order based on the number of citations for each paper. For example, an author has eight papers that have been cited these times. What is her in H index? We organize her papers with a number of citations from the most to the least. The first paper has been cited 34 times and gives us a one. The second paper has been cited 29 times and gives us a two. The third paper gives us a three. And all the way up to six with the sixth highest paper. So her H index is six. We know that H index is good for evaluating the cumulative impact of an author's scholarly output and performance. However, the H index has some issues. First of all, the H index is not influenced by citation counts of papers that have been cited at least H times. Second, the H index is time dependent as its value can only increase, never decrease. At the author level, it is proportional to the length of a researcher's career and how many papers she has published. For example, early career researchers would be at a disadvantage when compared to more senior researchers because senior researchers would have had more time to produce more work and receive more citations for their work. So H index is good for comparing researchers of similar career length and comparing researchers in similar fear subject or department and who publish in the same journal categories. Next, I'm going to show you how to find your age index in three different databases. When you get to the Web of Science, perform an author search and select the most likely result. This screenshot shows a search conducted in early December 2019. At that time, Ragnar has nine papers published that have been cited at least nine times. As we mentioned that the value of the H index can increase. It has become 10 now. In Scopers, you can perform a similar author search as we did in Web of Science. And here, Runner has an H index of 11. 
In Google Scholar, you can find runner's age index as well. I10 index was introduced by Google Scholar, but only used in Google Scholar. I10 index means number of papers with at least 10 citations. You may notice that Web of Science, Scopers, and Google Scholar provide different values of each index for the same author. We will revisit this question later. Just briefly mention two concepts on the journal level. H5 index means number of papers published in the report year and the preceding four years that have been cited at least H times. H5 median means median number of citations in the report year and the proceedings four years to those papers that have been cited at least H times. The H5 index and H5 median of a journal are respectively the H index and H median of only those of its papers that were published in the five complete calendar year. Thank you for watching.